Hello and welcome to this week's Hobby Time at Healy's video. Thank you very much for tuning in. This week I'm going to be doing a review of this right here, which is the Army Painter Battlefields Basing Set. So I'm going to be opening it up, having a look at what's inside and giving you a review. So, grab yourself a lovely cuppa and let's dive on in. And here we have it. So this is the Battlefields basing set from the Army Painter. Now I've not had one of these before so I'm really excited to see what I get inside. In terms of the Army Painter stuff I haven't really dabbled that much in it. I do have my Army Painter wet palette which I really really rate so I'm of course high expectations for the stuff that comes in here. If you want to find out more information about the wet palette I did an unboxing and a review and I'll put a link to it just above. Now as for this, this RRP is at £15.99 here in the UK. Um, in euros it's about 18.99 but I managed to get this on sale on the Army Painters Amazon store for 13.50 so super excited to see what's in it uh, so in terms of having a look so as we can see here first off you start off with free 50 mil basings glue I think that's really key because sometimes I've seen basing sets where you get them and they don't actually have the required sort of PVA glue that you need so first off already really happy with that then we'll get some brown battlefield battlefield rocks 35 pieces of swamp turf, some summer undergrow, battlefield field grass and battlefield snow. So this is apparently enough for more than 75 miniatures, which I think is brilliant and for the price I, you can't really go wrong with it. Yeah, so I'm really excited to see everything that comes in here, so let's get it open and have a look. So, and straight away this looks like a really well packaged kit. First off, you get this really nice looking guide, um, and I'll have to admit, even just the paper quality in this, you can see the shine, it's a nice gloss paper. Uh, I'm a sucker for good packaging, so this I'm very happy with. And it has basically a bunch of information in it on how to use the various basing materials and also information on the other products. Uh, I think this is really key for products such as this to really sell and talk about the rest of the range that you can get available and also other ways to help improve. It's, you know, end of the day, most people picking up this sort of thing, it's going to be like a starter set. So really happy, really like these little guides. So let's get rid of that now. So let's get everything out of here. So here's everything out of here now. So and I really like it when people are thank you note in their products. It's a small touch, but it goes a long way in my opinion. If anything's missing or whatever, there's information here on how to get in touch with them. So again, another really good thing. Looking good to the paper documents first, there's some information here on how to use the paints, some brush care, and the full range of 124 paints that the Army Painter have. Another little booklet here on hobby products. And again, this is like a nice little catalogue just to showcase everything that is available. So if you're somebody who's looking to expand what they've got, this is a really handy guide to let you know where next to go to. So onto the basing materials. This is a really nice sized pot of glue. Uh, it comes with a stopper to make sure that you're not going to spill anything afterwards. It comes sealed really well. It's basically PVA glue. You can't really go wrong with it. And the fact that it comes in the set, really, really good. Then we start looking at uh, the rest of the what's in the packaging. So first off your battlefield snow. So I'm going to open it up and actually have a look at this. And that right there is really nice. It's much finer than sand and it literally is that sort of snow effect and it should be really easy to just scatter across your miniatures. You could even put this over the entire miniature to give it the effect that snow has fallen on it which I think is really nice. If you compare it to Citadel's Valhall and Blizzard, this gives you a lot more freedom in terms of using it because it is a loose product. Now, although the Valhall and Blizzard is really, really good, I do rate this. This stuff is really cool. Next up, we have the Battlefield Grass. Uh, now, this looks like to me like a standard summer flock. It's in a really nice colour. And again, with this one, really easily dispensable. This is the sort of thing where if you have a big area that you need to cover, like a small sieve, just to make sure it's all evenly distributed. But with this, I'm really happy. I really like using grass, although a lot of my miniatures, to be fair, actually are on sand or snow bases. So this is going to be really handy, and I'm looking forward to using this to give a different effect to some of my miniatures. After that, we look at the undergrowth. Now, I've never used anything like this before, so I'm intrigued to see how it feels. And that's actually really, really nice. Uh, it's sturdy enough, it looks to me like it would hold up to you spraying it if you wanted to get it a different colour. It's very sort of pliable and movable, which is good. And you can even, I'm going to do it on this, you can tear it apart and create smaller size chunks, which is really nice. Uh, you've got a variety of different colours in here and it's really, looks like I'm going to get some really cool moss effects with these. So super excited to have a good play with that. 
that looks really really cool. Next up you have your swamp turf. I find it quite interesting that you get a swamp turf sort of sticker on here rather than you get the summer grass. Like this is a really good mix of things because you can do a lot of different styles of bases with them. Uh, it would kind of be, I'm glad that they've separated these two out because it would kind of suck if you had summer grass, summer turfs, you've got the summer undergrowth which was an entirely different sort of texture. If you then had for example like green moss ridden rocks um, and you didn't have the sand or the snow it would be a very one noted set so I'm liking the variety you get in here. Looking at the tufts, uh, if you haven't used them before the tufts look like they are pretty standard in terms of you get the one size overall. What these have is if you peel them off they have a, a sticky material on the bottom which allows you to stick it to the bases. Some people will still use a dabble of glue just to make sure it stays on there, but it allows you, gives you more control than using the, the grass itself by obviously being in this small tuft step and obviously pierce through. But again, really nice quality. Sometimes you get these and they fall out straight away. I'm being quite rough with it to see if anything comes out of it. And uh, I got a little bit, but that was being really rough, like I had to proper heave ho at it. But I think after a little while, again, that's really, really good. Again, I'm going quite rough. So there's no worry of this actually sort of, you know, losing the bits of grass that are in it, um, not to a heavy extent anyway. So really nice looking tufts on there, and I'm really liking the, the difference between the two colours. Next up, we move to the battlefield rocks. Now, interestingly with these, I was expecting rocks, not sort of little bits of almost wood or cork. So if you, if you can listen... It's not actually rocks, it's it's like little bits of, I want to say, yeah, like sort of like uh, cork or wood. Let's have a look. It's very bendy. So it looks like it's a, like a cork material that's just been shaped into a variety of rocks. I mean, I can get why they've gone with the cork material because you can do exactly what I've just done. You can break them up a little bit to make them look a little bit more natural, suit the size of base that you want to use. However, I am a little saddened by the fact they're not rocks. For example, when I've picked up some of the Citadel basing kits in the past, you do, if it says on it, you get rocks. You physically get small rocks, uh, that which are a lot, give a lot more weight to the bases, especially if you have some of the older metal models uh, or any miniatures which you've posed to be kind of, you know, top heavy. The rocks are really good at weighing that down. These wouldn't do it, but now I'm not saying this in a bad way. These are really, really nice in terms of the detail you're going to get when uh, putting these on. You've got such a lovely variety of shapes. You've got uh, big, small, lots of different sizes. Um, I am, a li I think there's a lot of small in here. I would like to have seen, you know, if you're getting a big bag, of, well, you're getting a bag of rocks. I would expect more rocks than kind of pebbles is probably the best way I can describe it. Like some of these smaller pieces, you're going to have to use quite a few of them to get that effect. But again, this is a really good mix that you get in here, so it's not actually that bad. I'm just a little surprised it's more the corky material than physical rocks itself. And finally, we move on to the brown battleground. Uh, this is a pretty standard sort of battleground you get. It's almost like ballast if you're using it for uh, sort of like old train uh, sort of miniatures or, or, uh, or things like that as well. Um, and this is pretty solid. It's much, much coarser than we saw of the snow, but it's also more coarse than the standard sand that you'll get. Uh, most sands are, are kind of a good in-between. So it's really nice. And the good thing with this stuff is once you actually put it on the base, uh, it, you can spray over it and you can paint it and it retains a lot of its texture as well. So it's really multi-purpose. Um, and again, a really good intro for people who are uh, looking at stepping up their basing game. Overall, I think you get a really nice mix of stuff in here. I think it's really good that you get some guides, a little bit of a how-to, how to use it. The fact that it comes with the glue is already great because you can almost, sometimes you can buy a set of things with half this amount for probably around about seven, eight, you know, even 10 quid. And you get a decent amount of stuff, but then you have to buy the glue separate, which could be anything from, you know, if you're buying it from a brand itself, you're probably going to be looking three to five pounds. If you're just buying some cheap pound shop stuff, obviously it's only a pound. However, the fact that you get it all in a kit, plus the glue, I think it's a really good value for money. And it's a great starter set for people who aren't quite sure how they're going to base their miniatures. And you can mess around with lots of different techniques. So, big fan of this so far. And there we have it. That was my review of the Army Painter uh, Battlefields basing set. Overall, I think it's a fantastic set for somebody starting out. You get a good variety in here, and it's really good value for money, but in terms of all the different mixes you get.
My only critique would be advertising it as Battlefield Rocks. I would like to have seen something on there to say Battlefield Cork, maybe uh, Faux Rocks or something. I was just kind of expecting rocks in there. That's my only slight critique, but otherwise it's fantastic value for money. And I'm looking forward to having a play and getting all of these fantastic new techniques and new basing materials onto the base of my miniatures. So I hope this review really helps out some people who are umming and ahhing about buying this. Personally, again, I think it's really good value for money, so definitely have a look at the Army Painter store and check it out, or order it from your local game store if they stock the Army Painter stuff. There are other options out there, but I think this one's really good value for everything it contains. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please let me know in the comments. If you haven't, also let me know in the comments. I'm always open for some critiques uh, and anything to help improve the channel. If you'd like to chat with me and a few friends live, check out my Twitch channel, The Hobby Time at Healy's. The link for this is below in my link tree. Every Sunday we do a Sunday Hobby Hangout where we chat about all things miniatures, all the gaming news for the week, as well as showcase fantastic miniatures from people within the community. And speaking of community, if you'd like to join us on a more daily basis, please check out the Hobby Time at Healy's community discord. We're full of great people in the community who love to share pictures of their miniatures, chat advice, all things miniatures and hobbies. So please join us if you'd like to. And finally, we'd just like to talk about one of the many ways that you can help support people within the community. And one of those is Ko-fi. Ko-fi is a wonderful platform that allows you to donate and help content creators such as myself by simply purchasing them or making a donation for the price of a cup of coffee. This can help people towards hobby goals, keep the lights on, or even buy new equipment to help them with their content. So please check out Ko-fi and some of the wonderful con content creators out there. And if you really liked my video, please feel free to make a donation. Otherwise, as always, thank you very much for watching. These videos wouldn't be possible without the wonderful community out there. So thank you very much for tuning in. If you've liked what you've seen, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell as it really helps me out. And as always, remember, stay safe out there, stay positive and be an ambassador for your hobby. Thank you very much. Bye bye.